Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Boundary Workshop. So I've had this table saw for over a year now and I've never got around to making a crosscut sled for it. The main reason being, it has a really good crown guard, which is great for safety and also has really good dust collection from it. So the trouble with most crosscut sleds is you need to take this off to be able to install them onto the saw. So I've been reluctant to do it. And then I saw a video by the newbie woodworker and he made a sled that meant you could keep this on. I'll put a link down below to his video. So I'm gonna try and do something a bit similar. So what I've got to do this is some 12 mil birch ply. I wanted a good quality ply because it's nice and strong and flat. Now I got this on eBay and this is four, bit, four foot by two foot and I got it delivered at that size. More expensive to do it that way, but I didn't want a whole sheet of 12 mil ply. Um, the reason I went for 12 mil is because the thicker the base of the sled reduces the depth of cut you can get. So I think 12 mil will be perfect for this saw. So I'm going to start by making the fence for this. I've got some 4 by 2 material which I've had in the house so it's nice and dry. I'm going to get it marked out to the 4 foot length and cut down using the mitre saw. Not a tool I use very often but perfect for cutting down long lengths like this. The fence needs to be perfectly square, so I get one side and one edge surfaced on the planer. I can then reconfigure the machine and get the pieces brought down to the same thickness. I say pieces because I've got two bits exactly the same to make the fence. I already had this rail and stop system. I want the stops to reach the bottom of the fence, so I mark out how tall I need the fence to be, and then I can get one of those bits of wood ripped down to that height. I can also get the second bit ripped down just to clean up the final edge. Then I can get the blade tilted over to 45 degrees, and this is so I can cut a little chamfer on the bottom of the fence so the dust has a place to go. So I've got the little 45 degree cut at the bottom and what that's going to do is give a little place for any dust to go so that it doesn't uh, all gather up and affect the cut at all. If you have the flip stop and some dust gets pushed against it, it's going to change the measurement. So that's what that does. Now, when this pushes through, obviously it's going to be higher up because of the sled. I don't want it to hit the guard. So now I'm just going to mark out where this guard is, I'm going to need to remove that material. So I'm going to swap out to a flat tooth grooving blade to do this, but you could just make more cuts with a normal blade. So there'll be a link down to this below with a lot of the other tools I use. Using the mitre gauge, I can just push this wood through, making several passes, nibbling away until all the waste is removed. Now I can give both of those pieces a quick sand down. I can get the two parts of the fence laminated together. This should help keep it nice and strong and straight. The second piece should also help enclose the blade and keep the sides of the sled together. And get it all clamped up and just leave it to dry. When I've made sleds for the tables from the past, I've made my own hardwood runners. The trouble is, with seasonal movement, they expand and contract and can be tight or wobble a bit. So I've got some of these UJK aluminium ones from Axminster and I'll show you a close up of them. So what they have is little plastic grub screws that you can get a slotted screwdriver in and wind in and out to get the perfect fit in your mitre slots. So I've got these adjusted so they fit in the slots with no wobble. Then I can get the ply that's going to be the base of the sled put into place. I mark out on both ends where the positions of the mitre slots are. Then I can get the board flipped over and I get some masking tape and mask along where the mitre slots will go. I've got some strips of double sided sticky tape and I get them on the back of the mitre bars and the other side removed. I was just about to try and get it stuck down when I remembered I needed to raise these bars up a little. 
So I use some 5p pieces and that just brings them up slightly above the top of the table. Then I can get the board on and push down and stuck down. I can then carefully get the whole thing lifted up and flipped back over. Now I want to mark out where the holes need to go for the bolts. I have a brad point drill bit that fits perfectly in the holes so I just get that put in and tap down just to mark on the board. Then I can get the bars and the tape all removed. So first I use a 3mm bit with a drill guide, drill a nice straight hole through and that will transfer my marks to the other side. I want these bolt heads to be recessed down below the surface. So I've got a 15mm faucet bit. I'm just going to drill down through all those pilot holes. The last job is just to enlarge those holes. I'm using a 7mm bit and this is to accept some 6mm bolts. Now I can get the board put in place bolts in the holes and tighten down with an allen key. Because the holes are slightly oversized, it gives me a bit of wiggle room for some fine adjustment. When I'm happy with the fit, I get it pushed through the saw blade and make the first cut into the board, not going all the way through. Then I can get the fence positioned and it's not going all the way back to the edge of the board and I can get one screw into one end underneath. It can now pivot on this screw and I can get a square up against the blade, missing the teeth and getting the fence squared up. I can then get another screw in the other end, securing the fence in place. I can now test out how accurate it is using the five cut method. Now there's plenty of great videos on YouTube about this. But basically I make a cut on the first side, then turn it 90 degrees marking each side with a pencil as I go until I'm back around to the first side I cut and I cut that again. Then I can test how square that corner is and see how good the off cut is and I'm pretty pleased with that so it needs no adjustment so I can get the fence locked down with a few more screws. If I wasn't happy I could have gotten that screw taken out, moved the fence in and out and adjusted it until I got it correct. I get the track marked out and I can actually use the crosscut sled to get it cut to length. To position it, I get a couple of the flip stops on and pushed up against the fence so that the stops are flush with the fence, it just needs to go back slightly. So I can then get it screwed into place. And that's it all done. It goes on and off without having to remove the riving knife or the crown guard slides really nicely, the stops are great on both of the rails and as you can see at the back it's got plenty of support to stop this all falling apart. So that's it all done and I'm really pleased with how it works. Now I do like using mitre gauges and I've got another one I think you can see behind me with a fence on and those both work great but sometimes a crosscut sled is what you need. But before using them, because it had the rear fence or rear rail on it, or whatever you want to call it, you had to lower the riving knife and take the crown guard off. That meant you had no dust extraction, it was a safety issue, and it was just a pain to do. So this kind of solves all those problems, and I think it's going to work great. So there'll be a link down below to where you can get all the bits that I used the flip stops and the rails and the UJK mitre bars. So I think that's everything. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you to my patrons and please subscribe for more videos.